Welcome to Chris B.I. My name is Chris Wagner. That's Dex. Wait, where'd Dex go? I don't know. Today we're talking about Dataflow's Gen 2. This is a super exciting topic because it really helps paint the picture of the data engineering side inside of uh, Microsoft Fabric and the Power BI space. Absolutely love it. Can't wait to get into it. Hey man, if you're just chilling, trying to figure out some stuff about Power BI, well man, I got the right channel for you. This is the stuff. Like it, subscribe, you know, turn on the alarm bell. You know, come back. Don't miss any of the future videos. This is the place to be. It's all good, man. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is all good. Ah. Okay, so uh, what is a data flow? Why do you care? Why would you use it? Uh, basically, the whole point of data flows is taking data from the variety of different source systems uh, that exist in the world and bringing it into fabrics so that you can start to use it inside your lake house, inside your data warehouse, that type of thing. Okay. Now, uh, we've previously, we've been talking about like data pipelines and notebooks, all that good stuff. That's all well and good. Uh, the thing we really love about our data uh our data flows is they're based on the Power Query language. So for all of you business users who are out there who are like wanting to get started in Fabric and don't know where exactly how to begin, I'm going to show you how, how to get started in this. Okay, so um, we're, we're going to go in and uh, we're going to log into our Power BI service or our Fabric service, uh, as you can kind of see where I am right now. Um, and I'm gonna head over, and I'm gonna keep this as simple as we possibly can, okay? I'm gonna head over to an existing data flow and show you how you can turn it into a Gen 2 data flow, okay? So I'm gonna head into my workspaces, and I'm gonna to go to where I have all of my data flows, all right? So my data flows are, are built and managed inside of here. So I'm gonna quick grab uh, my fact reseller sales. All right, let's click on that. Now, the, the nice thing about this is it becomes really easy to just go in and because it's built on Power Query, we're gonna be using the same code that worked over here. We're gonna use that inside of our, our Dataflow Gen 2. So I'm gonna click on Advanced Editor and here's all the information that I need. So I'm gonna copy this. And well, actually, before we do that, let, let me explain something here. This data flow goes from an on-prem database, takes data out of a SQL Server, in this case, uh, AdventureWorks, and let me see it. So it's a, a, it's a local host running on one of my uh, workstations here. Uh, we're going to take the adventure from the AdventureWorks database in the DBO schema. I'm going to grab the V fact or VW fact reseller sales and bring that over. Okay. Uh, now the nice thing here is it this allows for us to use all of our existing uh, Power Query code, but more importantly all of the data connectors that Power Query enables, right? So Power Query has like 250 plus data connectors out there. So whatever you're connected to, if there's a Power Query data flow that's out there, like you can use that in Fabric to start sourcing and bringing data into your space. That's a big deal because these Power BI data connectors were designed and built for business users to come in and use it. So, hey, even if you're in IT, now you get access to all these things. Okay, but I'm gonna keep it easy, right? I'm just gonna grab this, copy this, and I'm gonna head over to my uh, my my lake house and I'm gonna create a new data flow. So big thing here is I'm gonna head over to my AdventureWorks uh, data flow. Oh yeah, please close that window. Yeah, there's a cancel here. All right, let's head over to my workspace, AdventureWorks lake house, right? Now, when I click on new, you're going to see that it, it just has the old data flow in here. That's because I'm in the Power BI experience. You can kind of see it here. It's a little hard, but it doesn't matter. Because I'm in the Power BI experience, I'm looking for Power BI or analyst content to get to everything. I just click on show all. And now I've got access to all the capabilities inside of Fabric. So big thing I want to do is I want to like pull in uh, data flow gen 2. So I've got my data factory work load so I'm gonna take this guy I'm gonna grab this and now I can go and I can start building and this is a very familiar framework if you've been working in Power BI for a long time this looks like Power BI desktop right so super easy to get in and start working but this time since I'm starting from a blank query 
All right, starting from existing query, I'm just going to click on blank query here. Oh, let me do that again. Oh, that's not good. Get data, blank query. See, it's right here. I understand if I hit control. Oh, yeah, look at that. Blank query. All right, blank query. And now I'm going to paste this in here. It's going to give me all my information. Pro tip, copy the name of the table that you're loading if you're if you're doing this because we're going to have to name our data flow anyways. We want to name the data flow with the name of the what's being sourced. So grab that, copy it. Then we're going to go in and we're going to grab a gateway. And we're going to hit on next. It's going to run. It's going to say, wait a minute. We couldn't do this because you don't have credentials in. Okay, well, this is simple because it's, this is a data flow that's already working. So I'm just going to click on configure co connection. It's going to say, is this the one you want? I'm going to say yes, because that's the one I want. It's going to confirm it works. Oh, I've got this all here. Now, this is a big deal. Inside of uh, Power uh, Power Query or Data Flows, you're only loading to one place, right? Like if you're inside of Power BI Desktop, you're loading data into your model. If you're in Power BI Service and you're creating a data flow, you're loading that data flow into uh, the data flow element that would be available inside the service. Data Flow Gen 2 is all about loading different objects inside a fabric. So we have to choose where is this going to go next? And that is done right up here with the whole add a destination box. All right. So I could choose added destination and I've got a few things that I can, uh, I can, uh, I, I can choose from here. So I'm going to zoom in, um, uh, control and grab this. I've got an Azure SQL database, Lake House, Acousto Explorer, or a warehouse. Now, uh, full on disclaimer, I, I know for a fact this works on Lake House. Uh, I know that it configures for the warehouse, but it doesn't actually run. That's a bug. Uh, as of August 26, 2023, hopefully that'll get fixed re relatively soon. And I've got good confidence in the SQL database and the Custo cluster that this is gonna work fine, but I haven't done that before, okay? So I'm gonna click on Lake House, and I'm gonna choose what Lake House I want to go to, okay? So yes, I'm going to a Lake House. Edit connection, oh yeah, I gotta sign in. It's gonna make me authenticate, which is good, right? You wanna authenticate? All right, now, once I've got that selected, I'm gonna hit Next. Remember, I still have the table name selected, right? Now I get to choose what lake house I'm going to load this into. So I wanted this to go into the AdventureWorks lake house I've been creating. And here's where I need to have that, that table name again, right? Because now uh, I want to have it here. Uh, we'll, we'll just, uh, we'll give this a, a little unique name because I think that ta table might already exist. So I, uh, I put this together or add in the name, as you can see here. All right, hit on next. And now here's a big deal. We get to define, is this going to be, a, a, when every time we load this or run this, are we gonna be replacing entirely what we have inside this table? Or are we going to be appending it to the, to the end of the table, right? Are we taking snapshots of data and it's growing or are we, are we just, you know, replacing everything? In this case, we're going to be replacing everything. I just want to make sure that you understand that. Now it does want to know how, you know, how you want everything converted because we're going from a fixed format structure, which in this case is a SQL server. So I've got a strongly defined data type to a loosely defined data type, which is what a lake house is, right? Cause we're, we're just loading it in and you can kind of do, uh, you know, whatever you want on it, but they've got slightly different, uh, potential data types. This provides a mapping for me. So I could kind of go through here and see if there's anything in here that looks like it might be an issue. There's not all of this is fine. So I can hit save settings 
it'll save and I can now see that my my data destination is down here it's going to my lake house I can always click on that little gear and change it if I want to right uh, for now though I click on the save button and run it boom it's gonna go oh I didn't rename it so you can see my data flow uh, number three is right here it is running right now just gotta wait a couple seconds I've tested this out a number of times uh, loading from SQL server into the lake house that is a 30 to 45 second process so speeds are really really pretty good uh, you know this might be done and then this is configured just as you would any other uh, process inside of the service for how quickly it gets done oh as you can see almost uh, but I can go into settings while that's refreshing and I could do uh, like hey when do I want to refresh yes I want this to refresh on a regular basis I want it to be refreshed daily. I'm in central time, so I want to make sure that I'm uh, I'm refreshing on a central time. And I'm going to add a time to do this at. I've got my data flows they run at 6 a.m., so I want that to happen. And then I'm going to hit apply. And now I know that this is going to load on my schedule. I can go back into my lake house. I can see that it's scheduled here. This All right. There we go. It's done refreshing. Now I can go in. I can click on edit so I can go in. And you really want to make sure that you've got your data flow named the way you want it. So this is a data flow Gen 2. Uh, and it's going, uh, it's loading the, the factory seller sales. So um, we're just going to uh, rename it like that. And hit save. And now... Uh, we can see that my data flow Gen 2 fact seller reseller sales is right here. I can even go in and see what the refresh history was, how long that take. Oh, okay. It took a little over a minute. It was an on-demand process. You know, some of these things are a little nebulous. I, I, I've done like several of them. They're typically 35 to 40 seconds. But a minute, that's not a, a killer deal either. Uh, but that's up and it's running and I've got it scheduled so I'll do a refresh another time. Uh, a few things on this. The great thing is you could do things like loading from Excel. Here's one where I loaded from Excel workbook uh, that I have out inside of my, uh, uh, that I've got out in SharePoint. So I could actually go in and hit on edit tables and I could see I've got all of these uh, tables loading uh, for each one, I could go in. I can actually look at the steps in each one. I could see all of the loads that, that take place. I could see what happens, and I could see how it's handled. Um, and I can, you know, well, actually, this is a Gen 1 uh, data flow. But I could take this, and I, I, I could recreate this into a data flow Gen 2 uh, and populate that over as well. In fact, let's go ahead and... Uh, let's take a look at this one. Oh, there we are. Transform home. Oh, no, nope, not match connectors. Ah, oh, here it is. Source. Cancel. All right. Well, I, easy enough to like, copy them over, get them up and running, uh, and get your loads in place. All right. Hey, Dax is back. He got so excited by this stuff, he he hopped back. Um, as you can see, really easy to start with data flows, get them up and running. You can take advantage of all of the connectors that Power BI has uh, to, to bring data into your lake house and make that accessible for people. All right? So uh, thanks so much for tuning in. I, we did a live stream with Kevin last Friday to save money for, or to raise money for Maui. We are nearing or we're at by now over two thousand dollars raised. Really excited about that. Uh, do feel free to donate to Maui Strong. Uh, links are down below. People over in Maui could really use a, a helping hand, and Maui Strong's doing a pretty good job over there helping people out. And but they could use your help too. All right. Um, if you found this informative and you found this helpful. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, heck, turn on the alarm bell, or, you know, maybe do something crazy. Head over to Kratos BI, click on buy me a coffee, buy me some coffees, and, 
you know, say thanks for, uh, you know, support or heck go down to the merch store, buy yourself a t-shirt, uh, get yourself some stickers, you know, something fun, something to support the channel. Um, thank you guys so much. You have a great day. Peace. Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.